This is the WOWGO 3E, a sleek, comfortable, powerful, belt-driven electric skateboard that comes in, surprisingly, at a budget price of under $500. In this video, I'll cover all of this board's specs and features before sharing whether I think it's one that you should consider purchasing. Spoiler alert, it is. Thank you to Novelman Tech for being our channel sponsors. Make sure you check them out for all your eSkate safety gear and you can enjoy 5% off with the code AMAR at the checkout. Let's get into the review. I'm gonna try and keep this review simple and straight to the point because really this is a board that does everything that it says on the tin. Top speed wise, WOWGO advertised 28 miles per hour for this board. I've had no issues at all in reaching that in the higher speed modes as a heavier rider of around 90 to 95 kilograms with a backpack and it still felt really stable for me at speed. And that's thanks to the trucks and bushings on this board, which we'll talk about in a moment. And if you're a lighter rider, then Garen also tested the speed on this board and he faced no issues with stability or speed wobbles or anything of the like. So big thumbs up on the top speed and the stability. The battery on this board is a 12S 2P pack. I'm not exactly sure what cells are being used in this battery pack, but as I've chewed through the battery, I haven't noticed any significant battery sag at all, which is a great sign. The battery is rated at 216 watt hours or five amp hours. So of course it's too big to bring with you on a plane, but let's be honest, who really wants to take a board this big on the plane with them? With this battery, WOWGO claim that you can achieve a total range of 13 miles or around 21 kilometers. In my own testing, I probably got to around the 15 kilometer figure or around nine miles, and that's fast riding before I felt that the board wasn't really fun to ride anymore. Still, that is plenty of riding for me, particularly at the incredible price point at which this board comes in, which we're gonna keep coming back to. Power Otherwise, this board actually is a little bit more powerful than the WOWGO 3X for those of you that are familiar with WOWGO's lineup. And it's really interesting to say that because the 3X actually was a board that is inferior in specs in terms of battery capacity and motor power to the 3E, but actually when WOWGO released the 3X, it cost a couple of hundred dollars more than 3E. So again, I'm gonna keep coming back to the price, but WOWGO are doing a fantastic job here. The 3E boasts dual, 50, 55, 650 watt motors, and I've had no issues as a heavier rider with this board rocketing me up pretty steep inclines, and honestly, of course, there are many electric skateboards on the market that are more powerful than this one, but really this is all you'll need to get an exhilarating ride out of your everyday street board. It will really make sure that you always have a smile on your face and it is a pretty punchy board. If you're not ready for it and you're in the higher speed modes, the board will throw you off, which is a pretty good thing in my opinion. Now, not only are belt-driven motors more powerful than hub driven motors but also they facilitate for a more comfortable ride because you get to experience and you get to benefit from having four full skate wheels as opposed to two wheels and two wheel sleeves surrounding the hub motors and what this really means combined with the flexible deck and combined with the shock absorbing grip tape and the very nice spongy i think 78a wheels it really means that you get a very comfortable and responsive ride and you'll be able to ride for extended periods of time 10 miles plus without really experiencing any aches or pains. Now WOWGO are using the latest Hubbywing V5 ESC on this board and it's brilliant because it really allows for very, very smooth acceleration and braking, which is exactly what you want when you've got a belt-driven electric skateboard that is a lot more powerful than many hub-driven electric skateboards. You want to be able to have confidence and have full control over the power that's at your disposal. The last thing you want is jerkiness in the throttle. It will really throw you off, literally and figuratively speaking, and it will really knock your confidence and it will stop you from being able to enjoy the board. So that latest Hobbywing ESC, I found to be really smooth and it really allows me to get in tune with the board and have a great riding feel. Link to this is the Chua Smart app. Because we're using the latest Hobbywing ESC, you actually can tune this board to your liking with various parameters across the app. And what's really interesting about the app is that you can actually lock the board remotely. So if your board ever does get stolen, you know, you can ensure that somebody else doesn't get to have fun on it in your absence. Moving on to the deck then, and WOWGO have opted for an eight ply Canadian maple deck and honestly this deck is really really nice to ride it is a flexible deck of course but it's not overly flexible to cause you you know vertical speed wobbles when you're going at high speed and you hit a pothole or something it's a really nice balance that WOWGO have struck with this deck it's comfortable it's not 
overly stiff, but it does still have some stiffness to it, even for myself as a heavier rider. That's always one thing that I'm concerned about as a heavier rider. Is the deck gonna be too flexible and cause me speed wobbles? That's definitely not an issue with this deck. Also, the deck benefits from a subtle concave on it, so you can really find your feet on the deck, and when you're traveling at high speed, you can get your feet positioned in an ideal place to allow you to experience great connection with the deck and allow you to benefit from greater stability. Link to this is the fact that this board benefits from foam grip tape. The foam grip tape will allow your feet to sort of sink into the deck and that will help to subtly lock you in a little bit more. And also, of course, it has properties of reducing and softening the road vibrations and dampening properties that really enable you to experience a more comfortable softening ride. The trucks on this board I believe are Paris V3 clone trucks. For anyone who's familiar with downhill longboarding, Paris trucks are pretty much the best that there is and you know Wowgo have been using these trucks on their boards for many many years now and they've really perfected the manufacturing of them. They feel really solid, they're very very responsive and combined with the 90A bushings on this board you really get to experience a fantastic, stable, yet very nice carvey ride if you want to. You can adjust these trucks exactly how you like. So if you're somebody that only wants to travel at high speed, tighten them up a little bit, perhaps use some better or you know more stiffer bushings and you'll get to experience that. Or equally, just out of the box, loosen your trucks a bit, depending on how they are tightened from the factory and you get to really enjoy a fantastic carving experience. Honestly, this board surprises me with how good it carves. I'm really accustomed to double kingpin truck boards from the Evolve GTX to the GTR to then the X-Way Atlas and the Atlas Pro and the Meepo Hurricane. I'm really used to that style of carving, but with this board, it's still massively maneuverable and a great deal of fun if you can tune it the right way. When it comes to the wheels, Wago have opted for 90 millimeter by 62 millimeter 78A urethane wheels and these are really really nice wheels they're very very spongy very shock absorbing really comfortable on the road and surprisingly grippy when garen tested this board it was the first ride out of the box i hadn't at that point ridden the board yet because i've been so busy at work and even in wet conditions with completely fresh wheels that hadn't been worn in the board was really holding up very very well so very impressive amount of grip on these wheels and i guess it's because they're really nice and cushiony nice and soft so when you apply weight to the board they really dig themselves into the road surface and perhaps if they were harder geometer wheels you'd get a little bit more range because there'd be I guess less rolling resistance but they are incredibly comfortable and you still get plenty of range out of this board anyway so no complaints at all on the wheels from me. Now you can of course also purchase this board for not a lot more as a two-in-one package including the 105 millimeter cloud wheels or you can buy this board just straight off with the 105 cloud wheels so if you are somebody that wants to experience trails a little bit of light off-road riding or in general you're just from a place where you have terrible road conditions around you that might be something that you choose to consider personally i'm always more of a urethane guy than a cloud wheels guy it would be nice to see Wowgo offer something like the all weather wheels that tiny are offering with some of their boards or the hydro wheels that x-ray are offering i'm being really nitpicky there because at this price point it's fantastic that Wowgo are even offering us this choice in fact the general look of this board just really takes me back to my boosted days. I used to ride the boosted V2 Dual Plus, RIP boosted of course, and apart from that deck being a lot more flexible than this one, honestly this board looks and feels very similar to that board, which is a fantastic thing. It really speaks to the quality and innovation that Wowgo have been producing over the years and increasing their manufacturing standards to be able to compete with brands that previously had millions of pounds to invest in their innovation and technology. Now, interestingly, I've seen videos online of people who have been sent the 3E for review using the older Wowgo style remote. Wowgo have actually shipped me the Hobbywing style remote with the 3E and I believe that moving forwards they are shipping all 3Es with this remote and actually I much prefer this remote to the other uh, Wowgo remote. They're both very similar but this one has very smooth acceleration and braking of course it's linked to that V5 Hobbywing ESC and also you get a slightly larger screen size and it's just I think more ergonomic in the hand. It feels really nice in the hand and you've got USB-C charging as well, of course. So yeah, great move from Wowgo to be shipping the 3E with an upgraded remote. Now, price-wise, the board, just as it is at the moment with 90 millimeter street wheels, comes in at only $449. I had to read that twice on the website. I had to make sure it wasn't a mistake because honestly, that is an incredible bang for your buck. The value for money here is just incredible. Up to 13 miles of range, 
depending on your weight and riding style, 28 miles an hour top speed, belt driven, motors, general build quality as well. Honestly, this board is a steal. If you're after, I would say a budget electric skateboard, but this really is a budget electric skateboard that's offering you more than budget features. It's got a great battery, great speed, great overall build quality, and great customer service as well. I've you know, had friends that have purchased WowGo, and WowGo, without them, without knowing that they're affiliated to me, have offered them amazing customer service. This board actually comes with nine months of warranty, free of charge, and you can purchase an extra three months if you want to. But yeah, honestly, I am blown away by the price. And if you did want to purchase this board with the 105 millimeter cloud wheels, you're only adding around 80 bucks to the purchase price. And if you want the two-in-one package, which for me, I think is always the best bet because you get the best of both worlds. You never know when you're gonna wanna install 105 millimeter wheels to your board and completely change the riding field and change the environments that you can ride in. Then you're only looking at $549, which is still, in my opinion, a steal. WowGo also have warehouses across the US, the EU, and Australia, so you can often expect to be shipped your board within a week, which is fantastic. And in terms of criticisms, I had to think long and hard about any because again, the price of this board is incredible. The ride feel is really, really up there. It feels on par with how my boosted V2 Dual Plus used to feel. So I really, really had to scratch my head and think of any criticisms. It's really difficult to, to be honest, but potentially if WowGo can look into offering hydro style wheels you know the the all weather style wheels that have a rubber tread to them and that are great for riding in the rain of course i'd never encourage you to ride in the rain anyway but they just offer an enormous amount of comfort and grip potentially if wowgo can offer that as an add-on that might be a good thing but again this board is brilliant as it is i don't really have anything to critique about it per se but let's hear from garen after his first ride and see what he thinks acceleration on braking is so smooth carving's nice loads of power for this hill loads of power that's mode three and uh, i think the trucks are a little loose for, for, for like pushing the limits if you know what i mean yeah. but um yeah braking's really smooth yeah, I'll get it's got a bit of spring to it i'm not a heavy rider for me it's yeah it's nice it's not so it's not really flexible but it's got a bit of flex you can feel it this is just like skating had enough power to kick the back end out when i tried to pull away I've had a lot of fun on it. Uh, it's super smooth to ride. Uh, acceleration braking is really smooth. Um, I honestly can't believe how much power it's got. Uh, I spent three quarters of, uh, of the time I've been on so far in mode three, and that was more than enough power uh, for, for cruising around the city, keeping up with traffic, um, and especially on these wheels. Um, I was a bit scared to go up to the um, level four, if I'm honest. I'm a light rider. Uh, I could probably get away with it being a little bit more flexible. How much um, uh, I'm, oh, you should never ask a lady. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just shy of 70 kilos, I think now, like okay. 68 or so. So yeah, I'm still a fairly light rider. It's got enough flexing for me. You can certainly feel it absorbing some of the some of the rougher, rougher patches and stuff like that. For a lighter rider, um, I could definitely get away with it being a little bit more flexible, but it was, it was still nice. Like it was flexible enough to absorb uh, some of the rougher patches that That's we went over. I mean, I like how the, the weather sealing is sort of custom made for the ESC and the battery and it's made out of rubber where it was all foam. And yeah, the, um, it's... In general, I do think they could improve on their build quality. What do you think? I think, like, look at, like, the feel of it feels, it feels pretty solid. Like, I wouldn't, I'm not, wouldn't be worried about that at all. Um, but the, some of the materials, like, they feel and sound a bit pla a, a bit cheap and plasticky. Uh, I guess maybe they're, they're aiming at a price point, but to ride, it doesn't affect riding at all. Right. To ride, it's it's an absolute it's an absolute blast. Can I, yeah. can I take it away? Are you still on uh, full? Uh, I'm on three bars now. Okay. Yeah, we've gone down to Top three. Uh, hitting speeds of 22, 23. And how did it feel? Yeah, I turned up the trucks. Uh, I kind of like it. On, on this style board, I like the trucks loose anyway, uh, just for that carvey feel, and you can balance from, from one carve to the next. Uh, tightened up a touch. But even when it was super loose, I was so surprised how stable it felt. Uh, I did feel like I had the confidence to, to get to 20 mile an hour yeah. and no sign of any speed wobbles. Um, and they really were loose. They really were. It looked um, like you were really enjoying the car. <laughs> How did you find the trucks and the bushings set up? Uh, again, that feels really nice. I'd love to try this out on a really nice dry day. I think you could really push it quite hard and carve. I mean, you've got such a big contact patch here. I don't yeah. think it'd lose grip at all. Really great. 
And how did you find going over bad terrain? Because we went over a few crap roads. Um, a few potholes well. Yeah, Perth not the best, uh, doesn't have the best roads in the world. No. Uh, and again, like uh, the spring of the board and uh, what are these? Are these 70, 78As? They're soft enough and they're big enough to absorb most bumps in the road. So yeah, it's it's great for a great all round board. How does it compare to your, uh, your slip revolution? <laughs> that, that seat? Uh, it's shown it up, it's not even in the same class. It's com I, I probably, my slick revolution was probably, I mean, it was ridiculously priced. And this is just, it, it's in a completely class. It's a different class. Different class it doesn't yeah. even compare. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how, do you, how do you find the acceleration and the braking? Is it quite, quite sharp or? So yeah, so this is completely yeah. default, uh, as far as I know, fresh out of the box as it comes. Um, and it was smooth. I don't feel like I needed to, need to adjust it at all, if I'm honest. Acceleration was smooth uh, and quick, uh, and braking was quick, but so smooth it comes on really gently. Apart from when you're in mode four? Yeah, straight from a couple of occasions. Um, yes, the floors were damp. Uh, I, I felt the back end step out a little, a little bit of drifting uh, when I tried to pull away at, a, at full speed in mode three, that was as well. Um, I really do think this has got ample power for the majority of riders on, on this size wheel. <laughs> I just put it up to four. Yeah, yeah, I powered up that hill 21 in mode three. So you can get this board uh, with a set of cloud wheels uh, as well as a two in one. Um, I've ridden cloud wheels in the past um, and they can be a little sketchy uh, on uneven ground just because of the contact patch. Uh, so, but um, yeah, the larger wheel really does help you um, on, on rougher terrain as well though. What's, what's the most you've pushed your cloud wheels? What kind of terrain? Do you, you take them <laughs> full off-roading or just... Um, just I've taken them on, track? I have actually taken them on mild gravel tracks okay. um, and they, uh, and, and forest runs and stuff like that. They're kind of okay, but like I say, it's, it's just that it's, they're probably better on that than they are on, on a rough, uh, rough tarmac. Um, just because of the contact patch. They've got grips which are great for, for gravelly terrain, yeah. but um, on, a, on, on a really hard uh, like tarmac surface that's, that's bumpy, they, they don't do well. The board's got this handle. It's super great. We've just been cutting around town uh, and it's convenient to hold. It's in the perfect place. It's so well balanced. Yeah, it's really nice and handy to have. It doesn't affect your riding at all. It's not in the way. So that's a really nice feature to have. Uh, it's a little bit jarring here um, on the edge of the uh, edge of the grip tape when you're when you go around. It's fine with gloves on, but uh, I could, maybe that's could do with um, I don't know, but some improvement potentially. But yeah. um, it's a really great feature to have. Any cons that jump out at you? Or? Uh, on a relatively short ride, uh, yeah, not really. Like I say, the only con is really done a great job, I think. yeah, the only con I think is when we look at some of the details on the materials that they they look and feel a little bit cheap. But um, I guess they've had to cheap out somewhere. Yeah, they've had to if they if they're aiming at a price point. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's going to be a, a big issue for anybody, really. Do you feel the passion on the go as well goes motivated? Passion on the go? I mean, they've really put uh, as much as they can in such a tidy little package. So, yeah, I guess so. More fun on the go, for sure. I, I love this thing. <laughs> I absolutely Thanks. love it. In conclusion then, I think Wago have done a fantastic job with the 3E. They've really mastered the ride feel, I think. The board feels brilliant under the feet. And as was shown in this video, the board just feels brilliant objectively. If you're a lighter rider like Garen, it feels great. And also if you're a heavier rider like me, it also feels brilliant under the feet and it's not too flexible. Brilliant speed, brilliant range, really good overall build quality and fantastic customer service. If you are in 2024 in the market for an electric skateboard at this price point, then I think really you cannot go wrong with the 3E. This is one of the best, if not the best boards that you can purchase at this price point. So don't hesitate. And if you want to, you can purchase this board with my discount code AMAR using the link in the description below for some extra money off. That's all for now then folks. I've really enjoyed filming this video and I've loved riding this board. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and also give this video a big fat like if you haven't done already. I'll catch you on the next one. Ride safely and peace.